Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about what really happened to Jean Harlow. So when you think of the ultimate old Hollywood bombshell, you usually think of Marilyn Monroe, but long before Norma Jean Baker became a 1950s screen siren, another actress defined the concept of the Hollywood platinum blonde, and this was Jean Harlow. In fact, Marilyn Monroe grew up watching the 1930s star, even modeling herself in the icon's image. Sadly, Marilyn did follow in her favorite actress's footsteps, and not just in the terms of fame. The two starlets had controversial deaths and were similar as their successes in life. So just as Marilyn Monroe used to be Norma Jean, Jean Harlow was born as Harleen Carpenter on March 3rd, 1911 in Kansas City, Missouri. Harleen's mother's name was actually Jean Harlow, but after her daughter took on the screen name, she began going by Mother Jean. Similarly, Norma Jean would borrow her mother's maiden name of Monroe. Meanwhile, Harleen's lifelong nickname among friends and family was The Baby. When Harleen was a child, Mother Jean aspired to be an actress. She divorced Harleen's father, a dentist, and moved herself and Harleen to Hollywood to pursue her dreams. But she never found success. So, mother and daughter moved back to the Midwest, where Mother Jean married a man named Marino Bello. At the age of 15, Harleen caught scarlet fever, an illness that may have contributed to her eventual death. But according to an episode of You Must Remember This, a podcast by Karina Longworth, Harleen was soon healthy enough to marry the first of her three husbands. Harleen was 16 when she married 20-year-old Charles McGrew, the same ages as Norma Jean and her first of three husbands, James Daughtry. The next year, Charles inherited a small fortune and moved with his new bride to Beverly Hills, where the couple carried on a reportedly rather leisurely and party lifestyle. Harleen was discovered by Fox executives while she was visiting a movie lot with a friend. Apparently she wasn't at all interested in becoming a star, even giving them a fake name, her mom's. But certainly they were interested in her, or at least in her look, a glamorous blonde with killer curves. At the insistence of her mother Jean, the newly dubbed Jean Harlow began auditioning and appearing in Laurel and Hardy Shores, and even left her husband when he expressed opposition to the idea of her acting. Though she had just a small part in the 1929 film The Saturday Night Kid, Jean all but stole the show from the lead, Clara Bow, the it girl starlet at the time. Her big break was in Howard Hughes' Hell's Angels in 1930 in which she replaced the original lead, silent film star Greta Neeson, who spoke with a thick Norwegian accent and therefore couldn't, in the director's mind, transition to the talkies. Howard Hughes, publicity director, is credited for coining the platinum blonde, says The Atlantic, just as Mary Pickford was designated as America's sweetheart. This term was so successful that a 1931 Frank Capra film was renamed Platinum Blonde, especially for the white-haired Jean Harlow, even though she was the supporting actress and not the film's leading lady. Of course, Jean Harlow's hair color was not natural. Her hairstyles dyed it weakly with an incredibly harsh and dangerous combination of peroxide, ammonia, Clorox, and Lux flakes. Still, the look inspired thousands of women to repurchase hydrogen peroxide and attempt to recreate the look, including and eventually the future Marilyn Monroe, who even hired Harlow's same stylist to color her hair. While another beautiful blonde actress, Thelma Todd, had already paved the way for the bubbly, curvaceous blonde persona, Jean took it in a new direction. In the span of only a few years, the actress established herself as a smoldering sex symbol while simultaneously displaying a serious skill for a quick comedic dialogue. So when I first started YouTube, I really didn't know how to do any video editing or how to edit photos when I first started my blog. and. I was Googling online different classes I could take and I actually learned everything on Skillshare and this was a few years ago. So I learned how to use Adobe Lightroom on Skillshare as well as Adobe Premiere Pro, which I used to edit all my videos. And I also took a few courses on Instagram and just YouTube SEO. And it really helped me launch my YouTube channel a few years ago and it's super affordable. It's only $10 a month. 
to try Skillshare and I have a membership and I always go on there at least a few times a year to like refresh my skills and I'm really excited now because it's the new year and I plan on taking a few new courses as well. There's lots of good marketing courses on there especially since everything's always changing with social media and Instagram. It's good to keep your skills up or if you just want to take a fun creative class like painting or drawing they're all on there. And I like how affordable it is because I know I was looking at some community colleges and the Premier Pro classes there as well as Lightroom, they were upwards of $450. And especially now with COVID, I don't want to be going to a classroom or paying $450 to take this, these courses that aren't even that great where I can take it on Skillshare and it's way cheaper. And the first thousand people to use my link in the description box will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. So make sure you click the link below to join. And there's so many classes on there. So I'm excited to hear from you guys and see what you end up taking. She was mainly given dumb blonde parts and was considered by some to be the same in real life. Perhaps one of the most obvious parallels to Marilyn Monroe. So Jean Harlow's hair routine was quite horrific. And Howard Hughes was one of the people who obviously orchestrated her shocking new hue. And the billionaire producer signed Jean Harlow to a $100 per week contract and cast her in his 1930 film Hell's Angel. And to publicize this movie, as well as his newest find, Hughes wanted to give Harlow an unforgettable a nickname that would catch the eye of moviegoers, not unlike Clara Bow, who was known as the It Girl. Some of the doozies that were being tossed around for Harlow were Blonde Landslide and Darling Cyclone. Eventually, cooler heads prevailed and Hughes' publicity department settled on the Platinum Blonde. To complete Jean Harlow's new persona and look, her eyebrows were shaved off and drawn into an extreme arch and her lips were painted on in a cupid's bow. To publicize her film, the studio's publicists offered $10,000 to any hairdresser who could match the color. Naturally, no one could. Back then, there was no dye on the market that could make one's hair as white hot as Harlow's. And her personal ha hairdresser revealed the secret formula decades later saying that they used peroxide, ammonia, Clorox, and Lux flakes. And eventually, Jean Harlow's hair began to fall out because of all the toxic treatments. She stopped the dye jobs and began wearing wigs or sporting slightly darker hair colors and later flicks. In 1937, at the age of 26, and at the height of her career, Harlow died of kidney failure and uremic poisoning. Some believe that the heavy duty dying process may have led to her demise. Most likely, Harlow's kidneys were damaged when she contracted the scarlet fever at the age of 14. Kidney damage is actually a slowly progressing disease that can remain undetected for years. Harlow was also plagued with a host of health problems during her short life, including polio, meningitis, pneumonia, multiple bouts of influenza and alcoholism, though the harsh hair bleach probably didn't help matters. Nor did her movie wardrobe. Harlow's famous white silk gowns cut on a bias and sewn onto the actors were so snug that she couldn't sit down or barely breathe for that matter without bursting the seams. Slant boards were used to prop up the actress between takes. Jean Harlow's personal life was less stable than her work life. In 1932, she married MGM producer Paul Byrne. Only two months after their wedding, Paul was found dead from a gunshot wound to the head in their home. Jean had been staying with her mother at the time. Despite rumors that he was murdered at the hands of a former lover, and it turned out that Paul was still common law, married to another woman, and an alleged MGM cover-up, Paul's death was ultimately ruled a suicide. Found in the home was what some believed to have been a suicide note. It read, Dearest dear, unfortunately this is the only way to make good the frightful wrong I have done you and to wipe out my abject humiliation. I love you, Paul. And the postscript, you understand that last night was only a comedy. Jean insisted she didn't know what the note was about. After Paul's death, Jean Harlow still struggled to find happiness. She began dating a separated but still married boxer, Max Beyer. But Max's wife filed for divorce on the grounds of adultery and named Jean as a co-respondent. The studio, hoping to avoid another scandal, arranged for Jean to marry cinematographer Harold Rawson. At the time, Jean became ill and had to have an emergency appendicotomy. The union lasted only eight months. By 1935, Jean seemed to have finally found love with the actor William Powell. 
The two dated seriously for two years. However, she may have been personally with William, Jean continues to drink heavily, which, as Longworth notes, may have obscured other health problems, including headaches mistaken for hangovers and a puffy face and swollen belly that Jean likely believed to be alcohol-related weight gain. Her mother's solution was apparently to put her on a strict diet. Not even 10 years into her career, Jean was looking less and less like her blonde bombshell self. Even her signature platinum locks began to fall out in clumps as the weekly bleachings finally took their toll. Then in an operation to remove all of her wisdom teeth, her heart momentarily stopped beating. Two months later, while working on another movie with Clark Gable called Saratoga, her mouth was still infected from the surgery. Stomach pain and vomiting believed to be the flu kept Jean at home in bed and was later misdiagnosed and treated as a swollen gallbladder. Clark was reportedly very concerned after he came to visit and found a terribly bloated, rotten smelling Jean. Finally, another doctor correctly diagnosed her kidney disease, which was linked to her scarlet fever as a child and had likely been a long time coming. Sadly, at the time, there wasn't much that could be done. The first successful kidney dialysis was not until 1945, and the first successful kidney transplant was in 1954. Jean Harlow died two days after the diagnosis on June 7, 1937 at the age of 26. However, alternative theories circulated about her untimely death, just as they would in 1962 when the 36-year-old Marilyn Monroe unexpectedly died. Finding the truth difficult to accept, some fans speculated that Jean really died of a botched abortion or of an intestinal damage from being beaten or from the very bleach that gave her hair platinum blonde shade. The film Saratoga had to be completed using Jean's body double, an experience Clark tragically compared to acting in the arms of a ghost. The 26-year-old's body was placed in a massive burnished copper casket said to have cost $5,000. That year, Norma Jean would have been 11 years old living in the LA Orphan's home in Hollywood and perhaps only beginning to dream of stardom. In the very last weeks of Marilyn Monroe's life, she was planning to star in a biopic about her childhood idol Jean Harlow. Sadly, she never got the chance. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really enjoyed researching the parallels between Jean Harlow and Marilyn Monroe and I feel like there probably is a lot more so I'd love to dive into that if you were interested. So let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys again soon. All right, bye.